feels great. I mean, just to be able to be in a conversation and maybe be up for a great uh, award like this, not more. I mean, it's a blessing. I'm trying to leave, you know, a, a pretty big legacy there. You know, I want to be known as, you know, the greatest run back to come through there. I think I'm, I'm building up a decent resume for that right now. Very excited, you know, I've been grinding for all my life since I was young. So, you know, it's a little dream come true. I got bigger dreams. Uh, it'll be a very deserving award for me, you know. It'll mean a lot to me, my family, you know, the legacy of Miami Central. And I feel like for me to win this uh, trophy, it'll be definitely one for the books. Welcome to Hard Rock Stadium. I'm Mike Cuno alongside the one and only Trish Christakis. <laughs> we know in South Florida, football is just different with dozens of stars from the NFL coming out of Dade and Broward County. And right here at CBS Miami, we continue to shine a spotlight on some of the best high school players in the country. Our Netmore Trophy is now in its fourth year with past winners and nominees going off to play for major programs all across the country. So the big question is, who is the next batch of stars we should keep an eye on? Well, we have those answers. We've been searching all season long, going to workouts, practices, and games. So here are the top four finalists for the Nat Moore Trophy. Let's start with Jordan Lyle, the six foot running back out of St. Thomas Aquinas. You know you're special if you're carrying the rock for the Raiders. He's one of the most dynamic backs in Florida, scoring at least a dozen touchdowns in each of the last two years. And our next nominee, LeWayne McCoy out of Miami Central. Now McCoy and the Rockets are looking for the program's fifth straight state title. And he's doing everything he can. He's a dynamic player on both sides of the ball. 24-7 Sports ranked him as one of the top 150 players in the country. Trish, let's head over to Chaminade Madonna, where they are absolutely loaded at wide receiver. Jeremiah Smith has the size and speed college scouts dream about. The 6'3", 200-pound wideout has hit 1,000 yards receiving for the second straight year, averaging more than 100 a game. All right, Mike, but do not forget about his teammate, Josiah Jojo Trader. Not only can he put up big numbers, but he knows how to do it in big time games, winning state titles for both Miami Central and Shamada. Now he is part of a one-two punch that may be the best receiver tandem in the country. Okay, now that we've told you about who the nominees are, let's start meeting these guys, starting with Jordan Lyle. He's trying to become the second running back to win the Natmore Trophy. I'm trying to leave, you know, a, a pretty big legacy there. You know, I want to be known as, you know, the greatest running back to come through there. I think I'm, I'm building up a decent resume for that right now. Um, I always want the guys, you know, the guys under me, the younger guys, you know, to beat what I, what I set there and, you know, the records and, you know, um, certain games that I've done and, you know, just, just overall just better people than me. I just want them to, you know, success be successful. I feel like I was blessed with, you know, some God-given ability, of course, but um, my hard work, you know, my work ethic, I feel like it can't be really matched sometimes. Um, and that's what I try to, to, you know, instill in some of our younger guys too, uh, that, that hard work ethic, and um, I think they're starting to pick up on it. I don't ever want to, you know, step onto a field and, you know, think that, that oh, I'm the best on the field and none of these guys can match up with me because these guys can't match up with you. So. Um, I just, I just want to go out there, feel prepared, and you know, know that my team has my back and I got my team's back. Like I like seeing like my linemen smile and stuff like that. You know, uh, I like seeing my linemen smile, my receivers smile, um, my quarterback, my coaches. You know, I look into the stands, I see my parents. You know, they'll be happy, and my brothers will be happy. So I just really do it for the enjoyment of others, and you know, that's what that's what gives me like a little rush. Yeah. So what you think of your competition in the final four? Uh, some serious heat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're all great guys. You know, I've known all of them since you know we we're younger, and you know, it's great to have you know the guys back around. Trish, St. Thomas Aquinas has won a lot of trophies and awards, but this one has eluded them. We'll see if this year changes that. Well, for our next nominee, we head back down to the 3 of 5 where we find Lewayne McCoy, Miami Central's two-way star, is not afraid to make a tough catch over the middle while also inflicting a little damage on opposing receivers. 
Ladies and gentlemen. I mean, South Florida is just a different breed of football. Lorraine McCoy out on the edge, laying the boom, that's the Florida State commit. You know, you can go anywhere, you know, in the state, but South Florida, I just, I feel like it's a different breed of football. Like, the kids here, we breed football, you know, that's all we know. So, I feel like it's just a different type of football when it comes to South Florida. Um, it don't matter who on the field, you always gotta, you, you gotta know you're the best player on that field. When you score a touchdown, like, everybody go crazy. So, it's just, it's just a feeling, like, you only get one time, you know, until you do, do it again, do it again, and it just come mutual to you. But for the first time, you'll definitely, you'll definitely just look into the crowd and just be like, wow. Just eases the mind, you know, of a kid, you know, just going out on the field, like when you just upset, you're going out on the field, just getting some outs in. But when it comes to a game even, like, you know, you might know I was stressed all week, and then Friday I get to let out all the anger, you know. You know, I grew up with them guys, you know, play uh, Little League football with them guys. So, you know, it's just a blessing for all four of us just, you know, just to be here, you know, because i seen the work that we put in when we were younger, so. <laughs> Feeling is, you know, everything to me, you know, just being uh, picked out of uh, a lot of players in South Florida, you know, who work hard for what they have. And just for me to be picked out of all the kids in South Florida is just a blessing to me. Coming up next on the CBS Miami Natmore Trophy Preview Show, we introduce you to the dynamic duo from Chaminade Madonna Prep. Plus, the man himself, Nat Moore, joins us to talk about high school football and what the trophy means to the South Florida community. You can also vote for the best high school football player in South Florida. Go to natmoretrophy.com. From Christopher Columbus High School, Mr. Henry Parrish is the winner of the CBS4 Nat Moore Trophy. The inaugural winner of the CBS Miami Nat Moore Trophy went to running back Henry Parrish from Christopher Columbus High School. Parrish went on to play college football at the University of Miami. Welcome back to Hard Rock Stadium. In just a couple of weeks, we'll be handing out the fourth ever Nat Moore Trophy. And trimming it down to just four finalists is one of the hardest parts, Mike. Yep, but one guy who would not be denied from this list this season, Jeremiah Smith from Chaminade Madonna. Turn up. Everybody just wanted to be the best. Uh, I mean, everybody want the best for them, for their family and all. So, I mean, everybody try to win every game, win every rep. And, I mean, just competitive. Even if we just not, even when we're not playing football, we can be playing basketball, anything else. Everybody just want to win. And that's just how we was raised. Really. What does excited Jeremiah look like? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, just, I mean, can't stop. I mean, I, when I'm inside, I can't stop smiling. I like to go out. Uh, Spend time with family, I mean, that's the biggest thing, really. Um, I know how to play chess, so. Play chess? Yeah, I know how to play Interesting. chess. Interesting. Yeah. Why chess? I mean, it's a thinking man's game. I mean, that's something I really, my parent, my dad uh, told me, now he didn't teach me, but uh, I wanted to know how to play. So he took me to like the library. The library have, uh, like, you go in, they have like free chess board and stuff like that. You play against elderly people and stuff like that. So it's something I've been on since I was like nine years old. What kind of legacy do you want to leave? Uh. Just going down as probably the best, not just a football player, but to come out of South Florida, but as a great person too. Uh, I mean, when I do make it for sure, I mean, I definitely want to get back to the community uh, that I came up from, that I came and grew up in and stuff like that. I mean, that's the biggest thing I really want to do is give back to kids that's in need and stuff like that and take care of families. I mean, a lot of kids look up to me. So, I mean, just to be able to be one of the, be one of the ones to come out of Shamanah Madonna. I mean, so I just try to be the best, best version of myself um, on the field and off the field as well. Me and Jojo, I mean, that's that relationship, that's like a, another brother to me. Uh, I mean, we've been playing with each other since we was 11 years old. And we lost together, won together, won a lot together. 
worked out together, ate, ate out together. He slept in my house before, spent the night, uh, we went out with him. And that just, that was like another brother to me. A lot of schools are coming after Smith hard as we approach signing day. Well, now that we've introduced you to Jordan Lyle, Lowane McCoy, and Jeremiah Smith, there's only one more finalist left to hear from, and that's, of course, Smith's running mate from Shamadon, Josiah Trader. I feel excited, you know. Um, last year, I saw some of the players I, I know, like Mark Fester and Brandon Ennis in it, and, you know, I was just happy to be in it now, you know. Now the younger kids can look up to me and want to be in my shoes one day. I've been grinding for um like since I was young, so you know, it's a little dream come true. What is like your favorite part of playing football? I can say everything, cause football is really like an escape for me for life. So I have I enjoy playing football every single moment. So the whole I can say the whole game. I do the out of the ordinary things sometimes, you know, to catch people's eye, so people can notice me. Like what? Like one hand catches and stuff like that. When I was growing up, my brothers used to throw me the ball, I used to catch it and stuff like that. I just fell in love with it ever since. And I feel like a different person when I'm on the field. Yeah. I low key feel unstoppable, but I don't like to say I just like to be humble, but in my mind, I said, me growing up, I just, I just wanted to be the best and feel like being the best. So. What makes um, high school football in South Florida here so competitive? Uh, the rivalry games, you know, the kids growing up with each other, then splitting off. Like going against each other from Little League, then spinning off and going against each other from high school, you know. Just competitive and fun. Seeing all my buddies and stuff here, it just made me excited. So, yeah. Next on the CBS Miami Nat Moore Trophy Preview Show, Nat Moore sits down with Mike Cunio as we discuss what makes these four finalists so special. You can also vote for the best high school football player in South Florida. Go to natmoretrophy.com. The winner of the 2021 CBS4 Nat Moore Trophy is... Kenyatta... Jackson. Kenyatta Jackson. Two years ago, defensive lineman Kenyatta Jackson from Chaminade Madonna Prep took home the trophy for the Lions. Jackson now plays his college football for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Welcome back to the Nat Moore Trophy Preview Show. I'm here with the man himself, the namesake of the trophy, Mr. Nat Moore. Thanks for making the time here in the smoke in the tunnel at Hard Rock Stadium. We've introduced everyone to our final four, our finalists for this year's award. And I know you've been out to a bunch of games. What's really impressed you the most about this year's class? Well, I think it's just the talent. Uh, you know, we got three wide receivers. We got a running back. You know, I played high school football. I was a running back in high school and college, and now I got three receivers. And, you know, I was, at, I was talking to one of the young men, and I said, uh, so what's your 40 time? He <laughs> says, 4-4 four, four, when I was a freshman. And I looked at him. I said, now, did you get faster or did you get slower? He said, much faster. Much faster, oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, a lot of these guys also played track as well. When you look at the trophy itself, it's your patent it touchdown pose these guys certainly know how to find the end zone man you know we've had defensive players in the past win this award but i thought the offense at the high school level really stood out this season yeah i went to a couple games this year where offensively uh, some of these teams were really juggernauts you know there was a, there was almost impossible to stop them and they just went up and down the field strictly entertaining football and, and great football just to show you what kind of talent comes out of south florida you know, there's a reason uh, so many universities come down here recruiting. Yeah. Now, the reason why the trophy is named after you is obviously talent, but also the stuff off the field. What's some of the advice, words of wisdom you'd want to give these guys, not just the Final Four or the winner, but everyone who is a nominee about their community, doing well in school as you move forward in your college career? Well, I think the first thing I would tell them is uh, doing others as you would have them doing to you. You know, if you were in someone else's shoes that was struggling, suffering, you know, 
Uh, what would you want them to do for you? If you start just doing that. And then the other thing that I, I re remember about football, I remember about communities, I remember about life is you're only as good as the weakest link. So therefore, if you're helping everybody else get better, eventually the team gets better and eventually you're on your way to uh, compete for championships. Now, you can't give us an answer, but do you have a favorite for this year's Nat Moore Trophy? I like them all. I mean, uh, I know who the top four are, but, you know, there were so many kids that were impressive this year. So I'm waiting to find out just like you. Very diplomatic answer, Nat. Very well done. Uh, Don Shula taught me that. Too. <laughs> yeah, Take those life lessons with you as you go along. All right. So we've talked to the man himself, Nat Moore. As you see, the trophy's behind us. So we want to learn a little bit more about little Nat. The trophy, the big bronze thing that these guys are going to take home. Trish Kristakis has a behind the scenes look at how that trophy came to be. It's a process to get this into this. It's Ruben Bain. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. I mean, this is this is where it really happens. And the timeline to complete it all is longer than you'd expect. About a month and a half for it to completely wind its way through the system, all the different about 18 different stations. And if there's one minor imperfection. Sometimes you put a patina on it and that allows you to see something you haven't seen before. They start over, they sandblast it off and re-weld up that mistake and then start the patina process again. It's an intricate and dangerous process. With extremely high temps and heavy materials, it's not solid bronze, you wouldn't be able to carry it, but our trophy is different than most. If, if they were solid, they'd be so heavy they would just sink into the earth. I mean, <laughs> bronze is a heavy material anyway. Now the Nat Moore Award, the legs where it attaches to the base is solid to give it extra strength. Between crafting the mold of the trophy to weekly touch-ups and finally getting to this part. I'll take it in there and use a plasma cutter to cut the sprues off and get it cut into all the different little pieces. They'll sandblast it to get the rest of the investment off. All to get the final product for the best football player in South Florida. It really captures the spirit of Nat Moore and, you know, being at, at the top of your game, which is where he was when that, that photograph was taken. All the young men that received this award, they know that feeling of being at the top of your game. Still ahead on the CBS Miami Nat Moore Trophy Preview Show, Mike Cuno sits down with all four finalists to talk about what it would mean for them to win the trophy. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the 2022 CBS4 Nat Moore Trophy from Miami Central Senior High School is Ruben Bain. Last year, the trophy went to dominant defensive lineman Ruben Bain from Miami Central High School. Bain is now causing havoc for college quarterbacks playing for the University of Miami. Welcome back to the Nat Moore Trophy Preview Show. We've spent a lot of the evening getting to know these players individually, but our four finalists are now sitting together here, here at Hard Rock Stadium. We've got Jordan Lyle, Wayne McCoy, Jeremiah Smith, Josiah, JoJo Trader. Guys, first of all, how, how much have you guys played together or, or with each other? A show of hands, you guys have all played against, the, against each other at some point, right? So, Jordan, I'll start with you. What's it like when you see other guys of this caliber, this talent, line up on the other side of the field against you? Um, I see it as a blessing because, you know, I get to uh, show off my talent and, you know, enhance my skills against, you know, great players. Yeah. Luane, uh, there was a, the game against Chaminade this year that was on national TV. There was a lot of big plays that the three of you all had, but I know you're – Probably going to college as a wide receiver, correct? Yes, sir. But man, that hit at the beginning of the game. Yeah, there you go. You know what you're talking about. You're smiling. <laughs> yeah. You're smiling. What was it like playing both sides of the ball? Did, did you enjoy that? Or you think you'll miss it at the next level? Um, I definitely enjoy playing both sides of the ball against Shamanah, you know, just, you know, just to make plays and just 
like for my name to ring bells that night and and yeah that's that's it yeah jeremiah obviously you've made a ton of plays in your career you had a one-handed catch. you both had one-handed catches in that game your one-handed catch i literally our producer makes fun of me because i jumped out of my chair i was like whoa 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 slow down everybody we need to see we need to see that replay you've been one of the more sought after recruits in the country this year how have you handled some of that pressure uh, I mean, I handle it well. I mean, uh, I don't let a lot of that stuff get in my head because, you know, can't get too big headed. So, I mean, you got to stay a straight path and don't let all the outside noise get to you. Yeah. JoJo, you've made big plays in big games. You, you have a ton of hardware yourself, obviously, looking for a little bit more. What is it about the big stage, the bright lights, that brings the best out of you? Uh, I just feel like for the big stage, I feel like I play the best and stuff like that. I just bring out the best in me on the biggest stage. You looking forward to that in the next level? Yes, sir. Is that what you tell, you know, college coaches? Like, hey, when, when the lights come on, so does JoJo. Duh. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask you all, I know I've talked to the last two about, you know, sort of the recruitment process. Jordan, what's it been like for you? Um, you know, it's been steady with me, you know, um, strictly Ohio State right now. And, you know, I'm going to keep that up, you know, keep building a, a bond with the coaches and, you know, the team. Yeah. I don't want to ask where everyone's going because sometimes, I know you guys have all committed to places, but sometimes, you know, teenagers change their mind. <laughs> Luane, uh, what, what was the process, recruiting process like for you throughout? Uh, the recruiting process for me in the last year just blowed up in the last year. And I'm talking about like all platforms, like Instagram, everything, Twitter, it just blew up. And I'm just taking it steady with everything and I'm just blessed to be in the spot that I'm in. Jeremiah, JoJo, one after the other, what would it mean to bring home this trophy right here? Uh, it means a lot uh, for me and my family and for Shaman Madonna as well, uh, and for my legacy as well. So, I mean, I just, I mean, win that trophy would be something big. JoJo? For me, it would be big for my family, big for, like, my, uh, for the school and stuff like that. Yeah. Shamanad's got one of these in their trophy case. Central's got one, too. St. Thomas Aquinas, you guys got plenty of trophies in your, in your cases. As well, we'll see if this one's coming home with you guys. Thank you so much for the time this evening. Good luck the rest of the way. I know you guys got some games left. Then it's off to college and on the big stage. It should be a lot of fun. Thank you guys so much. Been a pleasure getting to know you guys this evening. Don't forget, there's a few more days left to vote for your favorite Natmore Trophy nominee. Just go to natmoretrophy.com. And of course, to see who wins, join us December 19th, cbsmiami.com and TV33 to find out who will win the 2023 Natmore Trophy. Thanks for joining us.